Hello and welcome. My name is Meepolis and this is Literally Graphic. And today we are doing yet another I read this back in the day but never actually reviewed it reread and finally a review! This time it's the really popular book This One Summer by dynamic Canadian cousins duo writer Mariko Tamaki and illustrator Jillian Tamaki. It was originally published all the way back in 2014 by First Second and it received a lot of nominations and awards. As I mentioned at the start, the author Mariko Tamaki is Canadian. She is described in her bio as a Toronto writer, playwright, activist, and performer, a person who creates for almost any medium one can write for, apparently. She and Jillian previously worked on the controversial book Skim, as well as the graphic novels Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me, Amigo Superstar, Saving Montgomery Soul, She-Hulk, Deconstructed, Supergirl Being Super, Lumberjanes, Unicorn Power, Tomb Raider, and so much more! Jillian Tamaki, being equally prolific, is also Canadian and wrote and illustrated a highly enjoyable graphic novel, Super Mutant Magic Academy, which I should reread and re-review. Other graphic novels she has worked on and I should probably read include Gertie's Leap to Greatness, They Say Blue, Half World, Indoor Voice, Gilded Lilies, and so much more. Going back to the title at hand, however, the following is how this one summer is officially described. Every summer, Rose goes with her mom and dad to a lake house in Owago Beach. It's their getaway, their refuge. Rosie's friend Wendy is always there too, like the little sister she never had. But this summer is different. Rose's mom and dad won't stop fighting, and when Rose and Wendy seek a distraction from the drama, they find themselves with a whole new set of problems. It's a summer of secrets and sorrow and growing up, and it's a good thing Rose and Wendy have each other. In this one summer, two stellar creators redefine the teen graphic novel. Cousins Mariko and Jillian Tamaki, the team behind Skim, have have collaborated on this gorgeous, heartbreaking, and ultimately hopeful story about a girl on the cusp of her teen age, a story of renewal and revelation. TLDR, my opinion here, coming of age story, lots of sad feels, awkward juxtaposition of childhood and adulthood, parents fighting, rocky mother-daughter relationships. As with many popular books that I like, the art of this one summer felt special. Consistent, but still pretty relaxed. Blue, very blue. Some decompression of time, but Tilly Walden spinning, which I now can't stop thinking about, does more. With lots and lots of female-identified characters bouncing around, there's a nice swath of different kinds of women and girls. I don't have a hard time tracking the different characters because of none of them look very similar. While obviously the younger characters are just coming into their sexuality, we are mostly presented with heterosexuality, besides a brief mention that all the other kids at Wendy's summer camp were children of lesbians, which isn't the best. That said, my impression of the Tamakis in general is pretty queer positive, so maybe that's just not the kind of coming of age story they wanted to write. Pregnancy is a recurring theme and something that most people most strongly associate with heterosexual sex. The way in which the story takes place in quote unquote cottage country, this does bring issues of both class and race into play. I had actually forgotten that the girls visit a quote unquote heritage village for the Hurons. And while there's no admitting to the fact that cottage are on stolen indigenous land, the characters do, in their boredom of being too old for this sort of thing, mention that all the reenactors are white and that this is all a sham. If you want to actually read indigenous comics by indigenous creators, I would recommend you look at my list on Goodreads. It's a, it's a booming industry that's widely published about. Uh, maybe it could have gone further, but it struck me at least as being significantly better than the way class is portrayed in the comic because the year-round residents of this vacation locale are consistently portrayed as drunk and over-sexualized, with some sympathy emanating from the moody main character, but very little understanding, which is just kind of condescending. Anyway, bye y'all, keep reading, and resist fascism. And as always, I would like to acknowledge that for the most part, all of my videos are filmed and produced on the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit, and Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron Wendat Nation, land covered by the dish with one spoon, wampum belt covenant.